Hey everybody, Tim here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make uh, one of these surfaces, uh, these special solids, really, uh, that calculus students often encounter. You know, where they have, where they're given a certain cross section that's not a surface of revolution, say, but it's more of one of those like prism stacking things where you have a surface. In this case, the cross sections parallel to the y-axis or equilateral triangles. You know, you can you could change your limits of integration. You can even change the upper and lower functions. Okay and do uh, all sorts of things. So we're gonna build something like this because it's really powerful. I mean, there's, yeah, there's lots of uh, there's lots of these out here on GeoGebra's site where you can have kids play and move around and explore, but it's much more uh, meaningful experience for students, in my opinion, if they can actually, if you have them actually try to build these things for themselves to help them visualize it. Because as students build this in GeoGebra, they're going to uh, they're going to they're going to encounter a lot of concepts they've learned in previous courses like writing parametric equations and how to write one quantity as a function of another. We'll go back to trigonometry and even basic geometry, right? A lot of rich tasks in building something like this. So we're going to take you on a journey here. We're going to actually build uh, the case of the equilateral triangle. We're going to be able to put in two functions, limits of integration, and um, we're gonna we're gonna build this. So let's do it. Now I'm going to start in GeoGebra's 3D calculator. So you want to go to GeoGebra's site, make sure you're logged in so you can you and your students can save your changes there. All right. And uh, you could build this in the classic app if you want, but uh, I like the 3D calculator. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go there. And let's rock and roll. The way the 3D calculator works, it's pretty simple. X is red. The x-axis is red, the y-axis is green, the z is blue. R, G, B, X, Y, Z. Kind of that logic there. All right. Give us some room to type here. So let's type in an upper function. F of x equals, say, sine x plus 3. That'll be our upper function. Our lower function we'll call g. G of x equals, I don't know, negative 2 plus cosine x. I don't know why, but I'm in some kind of a trig mood tonight. All right. And so let's do our limits of integration. We'll type A equals 1, got a slider. B equals 1, got a slider. But I like to just put, for something like this, I like to make my B lower limit A. So basically, B is always kind of like greater than or equal to A, if that makes sense. Only because I want B to be the upper limit of integration. All right, so there we go. So now we can actually put in our boundary points here, right? We have A, F of A. We have B, F of B. We have, um, what, A, G of A, and B, G of B, right? And check this out. We can even move any one of these here, and it'll move the slider for us. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna now chop off these ends because I don't like them, all right? I just want to have, like, the piece of the salad I'm looking at. So to, do, to restrict the domain here, I'm just going to type function. Tell GeoGebra, give me function f, but just go from a to b. See what I mean? It does it. And I'll do the same thing here. Function, whoop, g, a to b, done. And in doing that, now, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna refer to the upper as f and the lower as g, but even though these are called h and p, all right, I'm just gonna turn those off so you can kind of see it there. See what I mean? Now, let's go ahead and put a point on here on one of these graphs. Use the point tool and just uh, click on any one. See how E? E is here. Turn off that point tool. It's still highlighted. You want to turn it off by hitting that move arrow. You can move this along the function. See what I mean? If I move D higher, E can go further. All right, but it'll always stay on there. I want the corresponding point here with the same X coordinate. So I'm going to plot that next. So here, you know, in Desmos, it's e dot x, but in GeoGebra, it's x of e, the x coordinate of e. Remember, the upper function was called f of, it was f, so f of x of e. Whoop. And then the z coordinate is obviously 0 here. Whoop. Uh, yeah. There we go. That works. So here we go. Now, I want to make an equilateral triangle now. So ef is a, is, is a side there. And then the other point's got to be somewhere up here. So the question is, right, where where do I put it? Now, that that's the tricky part for students. And that's the part we got to think back. How do I, what do I know about an equilateral triangle? Well, 
obviously other than all sides are equal, right? We also know that all angles are 60 degrees. It's almost like, what if I even got some, so students could think about this a couple different ways. You can have students take the next few minutes just to brainstorm, how the heck are we gonna actually plot that third vertex? See what I'm saying? Now, one way you can have students do it is to find the midpoint of EF first, right? See how G is stuck in right in the middle between E and F? And now they gotta go up, so it, the X, the X and Y coordinate of G is gonna be the X and Y coordinate up here. The only difference is the Z is now gonna be positive something. But what is the value of that something, right? So, oh wait, well wait, oh yeah, go back to your special right triangles. It's root three times the distance EG, right? So one way I could do it is say, hey, the X coordinate of G, the Y coordinate of G, and I want square root, SQRT for square root, open parentheses, of three times what now? Oh, it's just gonna be, um, well, Y, isn't it gonna be really Y of G minus Y of E, right? See that? There's one way we can get that. That's definitely equilateral. Another way, so let me hide H. Another way we could actually do it is rotating. We could rotate, whoop, we could rotate F now. We could rotate F 60 degrees about E, but we gotta stay in that same plane that has EF, you know what I mean, that, that X equals a number plane. So we're gonna rotate F pi over three, sorry about that, um, about point E. But look at the, see that point right there? That's actually in the gray plane. If I actually do that, see how it's, so we don't want that, we want it to be up here a little bit. So with GeoGebra, you have to give it a direction now. Here we're gonna give it an, a line that's perpendicular to the plane of rotation. And that line here is the x-axis. Boom. So again, let's, let's hit the brakes for a second before we go on, right? We rotated F 60 degrees about E but we said x-axis because the x-axis is a line that is parallel to the axis of rotation. Like if, if I have a plane, if, imagine that vertical plane F that goes through F, E, and F prime, it's x equals a number, whatever the x, x, x of that is, right? That, that line is perpendicular to, um, I'm sorry, that line is parallel to the axis of rotation, or you could think of it as that line, the x-axis is perpendicular to the plane in which I am rotating. That plane x equals whatever that number x coordinate of e is, okay? So notice here h and f, they have the same, look at this, they have the same coordinates here. Not surprising, right? So we could hide one of them and we can actually go here and uh, find the polygon tool and make it. Let's see, there it is. I've used GeoGebra for so long, I still can't find these things. So you're not the only one, trust me. So polygon is highlighted, let's do E, then F, and then F prime. Boom, and go back to E and close it. Hit the move arrow there so you can move it around. Nice, I'm liking it. Now, if I, just to get a little sneak peek, if I right click on this and show the trace, you can move either and you could see what that what that curve is gonna look like. I mean, the surface we're gonna build, we need to put a, a boundary line up here, and then we're gonna to have to build the two walls. This wall here, and the wall here that kind of slopes down the other side, right? So let's do that. Because tracing is cool, but it's not the most efficient way. Again, right click, uncheck show trace. Now, let's think of the trigonometry, or the geometry involved. Let's go back a few years, right? We know, again, I want reason, reasoning with students here. Students, you know, you know, we talk with students, they should sure know that, like, you know what, at least the Y coordinate of this point here is always right above the midpoint, of, like the average of those two functions. Oh wait, can we actually graph the average of those two? Isn't this just really uh, um, one half F plus G? I mean, come on, I mean, that F is always, watch this. So there's the average of the two functions is purple, right? Look at this. If I move E now, you see how the vertex, the, the third vertex of that triangle is, is always gonna be above that 
purple makes sense, right? So now, what's this here? Oh, yeah, that's just some, sometimes in 3D when you work, go too fast, it kind of like, I think that was, oh, that was one of the traits before. Anyway, so now, um, now to build this, to actually trace this out, we got to use the curve command. Whenever you deal with parametrics in GeoGebra, use curve. Here's how it works. We want to write three parametric expressions, an X, a Y, and a Z. And we're going to write it in terms of, I like to use the parameter T. X is the easiest. X is T, right? That's what we all love to write. X of T equals T. But in this case, T is going to go from A to B. Now we need to write the Y coordinate of T. I'm oh, sorry, the Y coordinate here. Wait a minute. Isn't the Y always going to be on the average of those? Right? So the Y coordinate here is going to be, uh, what was it? It was called Q. Q of, no, sorry, Q of T. And the Z coordinate, the, the Z is always going to be uh, how the way we defined it up here, it's going to be the square root of 3. Um, this is going to be the square root of 3 times what? Uh, this function minus that function, which was q of t minus the lower, which was g of t, right? Remember, g of t was the lower one, that orange one right there? Or it, the orange one was part of g of t, I should say, right? So x is t going from a to b. Y is that purple function, Q of T, and Z, the Z coordinate here is going to be root 3 times whatever that distance there is, Q of T minus G of T. And now we tell GeoGebra, see, that's the first three things, the X, the Y, the Z. Now we tell the parameter name, obviously, is T, and it's going from A to B. And enter. Boom. There it is. Check it out. See? We're getting there, people. We're getting there. And now the fun part begins, or my favorite part is building the walls. All right. And to do that, we use a surface command. And we still need to think parametrically. So here, we're going to type in the word surface. Yes, it's this long one here. I know. <laughs> it's intimidating, but trust me, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as it seems. All right. So the surface now. I like to use letters U and V when I do surface. U is always my, well, the way I do it, U is always my X. X is U, right? And U is going to go, and later on in the command, we're going to go U, comma, A, comma, B to tell GeoGebra that, all right? But now i got to think of the Y. So let's do that. Let's go here. Ignore that error message, right? So now, let me delete this slider it made here. It just does that sometimes. All right, now, here's the Y. So we're going here. We're going to start at this lower function, and we're going to crawl our way up to the, roof, the, the top of the roof here. Remember, see what I mean? So now, the lower function is called g. So I'm going to say g of u, right? Plus a scalar v now. I'm going to I'm going to describe I'm going to describe that v is like the filler, what fills the wall. I'm going to describe a second. Plus v times now this distance. What is this? What is mathematically? What is this distance? I start at g, and then I got to go the distance. Q minus G. So Q of U whoop, minus G of U. Right? Now, okay, and V is actually going to go from 0 to 1. So when, when V is 0, we're starting at function G. And when V is like 0.2, it's building some of the wall. We're going to crawl our way up here. Okay? Now, for the Z, let's look, let's, let's, let's check out the Z here. Okay? Yes, it makes sliders, U and V, but I stopped typing in the middle, but you could ignore that. Okay, so like, let's look at the Z. Where does Z start? Z starts at zero, and then it's going to progress its way up to whatever the heck root three times that distance is, right? So let's, let's type it in. We can get rid of this U. Again, that's just because I clicked out here before I, stopped, I finished typing it, right? So this is going to be now V so this is going to be starting at z equals 0 plus v times, um, let's see, v times, uh, are we going to define that? It's going to be the v times the square root of 3 times the distance q 
of u. That's the middle, the average one, minus a g of u. q of u minus, see a little more here, q of u minus g of u. Okay. Now, the hard part's over. All right. Um, actually, that should be here. This parenthesis should be here. Yeah. 0 plus v times root 3. That. And now, we tell GeoGebra the first parameter is u, and that's going from a to b. The second parameter is v, and we're going to scale from 0 to 1. And right there, ladies and gentlemen, our wall is complete. Again, x is u. U goes, whoop, u goes from A to B. The Y coordinate starts at G of U, which is that lower function right there. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a scalar, V go from 0 to 1. When V is 0, it starts at G. And when V is at 1, you're, you're ending up at this Y value here. But y, it's telling Y to fill in, when V goes 0 to 1, that expression there. And for Z, we start at 0. And we creep our way up to root 3 times that half distance right there, which is this, as v goes 0 to 1. Hit enter. You got it. Now, the cool thing is, is that I, I could still move d, right? It's still going to, see what I'm saying? Pretty cool. Let me zoom out a little bit here so you can see the whole thing. But now the rest of it shouldn't be that bad. So let's actually duplicate that input to see if we can get the other side. Now x is u, u goes a to b. That part's easy. But think of where y is starting. For the y, I'm starting here. Remember, y is green. For the y coordinate, I'm starting at the purple and I'm going to the red. This was called q. This was called f. So it's f minus q this time. Oh, okay. So I'm starting at q. And you can watch it change as you type. It's pretty cool. And so now this is going to be f of u minus q of u. Right? Now if you look here, this is almost correct. You see how the y is like perfect? Look at that. The y, the x and y are perfect, but the z is what's crap. The z is like, no, no, no. As I go from the middle to the upper, this thing's got to slope downwards. Can't go upward. So what's got to change here? Well, a couple things. I mean, I should probably put here, um, I mean, granted, this minus that, same as that minus that, but um, I'm going to call this F. I'm going to put the Q here to be consistent. And the scalar out here is actually 1 minus V. And I'll tell you why in a second. There we go. We got it. Okay. Reason why is because when the scalar... When I start going from here and I work my way to here, right? When I start here, the Z for the Z piece, the Z is at its peak, so that's why V is one. When the Y is minimum, the Z is maximum. So that's why I have a one minus V for the scalar of Z and a V and a just the V for the scalar of the Y there, Y part. Okay? But now, um you're this is pretty much kind of the logic here. Let's see, at any time now, we can go back and we can change these things. Like, I can go ahead and just make this a constant, negative 2. See what I mean? See how it changes like that? Or you can make this, uh, you can make this pretty, uh, let's, let's make, bring this up to 6, and let's make an amplitude of 3 and see how nutty it gets. Right? Look at that thing. Right? And I'm going to skip the part of building the walls here because I think making that regular polygon is much easier compared to the stuff that we just did. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how it looks. And if you want to get rid of those lines on the surfaces, you can just, uh, oops, you can just right click on that, go to settings, and go to style, and bring the thickness to zero. Change of colors, do whatever you want. Have fun with this. Um, again, that's the equilateral triangle one, but I think a great one for students to start with and an easier one would be a square cross-section. I think the square would be much easier. Um, see if you can do that first, and then you can try some others. All right, so I uh, hope this helps, and uh, yeah, have fun with it. And I'll, I'll, put the, I'll save this, and I'll put the construction in the YouTube video description uh, after. So thanks for watching.